Old people, sir. Hey guys, this is Tiffany from GrowingDine.com. I thought that today I would do a really simple but hopefully informative video on how you can stock your own holistic medicine cabinet. And this is just what I have. This is what I do. There's obviously other ways that you could do this, but I know that there are some people out there that are looking for direction on where to start in building their own herbal, natural, holistic medicine cabinet. So today I'm gonna to go through some of the basics of what I have and what I use, what I use them for, and where you can get them. So let's get into it. While I am talking to you guys about this, I am going to be chopping up garlic because the first thing that I want to talk to you about is garlic oil and what it's used for. So my son knocked over our bottle of garlic oil last night he knocked it off the shelf and broke it so i'm starting another batch okay so garlic oil was kind of my gateway drug into natural remedies um, because garlic has so many amazing healing properties that a lot of people don't even know about it's simple it's something that you probably already have on hand if you cook at all and garlic oil is basically just minced garlic and olive oil. Um, so you should already have that on hand if you're a cook. You can add essential oils to it if you want, but you don't have to. So what we use garlic oil for is really almost anything. Garlic is antiviral, it's antibacterial, and it is antifungal. So it's great to keep around. It comes in handy for all kinds of uses. You can also eat it raw, medicinally, um, but obviously that's not everyone's cup of tea. Um, doesn't taste great, although I've gotten kind of used to it. What I like to do is just mince it up and swallow it with a small glass of milk and it really masks the taste. You really can't even taste it. Anytime we feel ourselves coming down with something, we start using it immediately. And how we use it is by rubbing it. Well, what I like to do is I like to rub it on my lymph node areas. You can also rub it on the soles of you or your child's feet at night. Put socks on, let it soak in. It is easily absorbed through the skin. So that is what we like to do and obviously tastes a lot better, works a lot better for kids. Um, as opposed to trying to get them to eat raw garlic. But what I do to make my garlic oil is I just chop up some garlic, just like you would be mincing it for a recipe. Um, I put it in a small mason jar like this, and you can do a larger one if you wanna do a bigger batch at a time, and just pour olive oil over the top until it is covered. You don't wanna to put too much oil, you just want to put it enough to cover the garlic. So as I continue working on this garlic oil, which I will show you again here in a minute, once I have it done, um, let me talk to you about a few other things that I keep in my arsenal. Vitamin C powder. This is the vitamin C powder. Bleh, bleh. Can you see it? You can mix it in water, juice, smoothies, um, and this is sourced from real food. So this is the Pure Synergy Pure Radiance C, and it is vitamin C from organic fruits and berries. So this is not ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid is better than nothing. Um, this is definitely best. Baby's waking up. Okay, so what I like about the real food vitamin C is it has a better absorption rate. This is something that I take as a supplement, not every single day, although you certainly can, um, especially during the winter time. Um, I probably take it once or twice a week, maybe. Um, and then if I feel something coming on or if I'm fighting something, then I will take a larger dose of this. 
Um, and that's something that is really good to look into as far as um, dosage. You can actually take a lot more vitamin C than what the daily value is, especially if you're sick. It's actually good to take really high doses of it. Um, and the worst thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna get some diarrhea, okay? That's, that's the worst thing that's gonna happen. So yeah, I mean, we all know the goodness of vitamin C. This is the particular brand that I like to use because it is sourced from real food and it is better absorbed. I don't think I said this yet, but I will link all of these things down below or if you wanna make your own, where you can source the ingredients from. Got garlic peeling my hair. Moving on, the next thing I wanna talk about is liquid zinc. So this is something that I actually never had until COVID. Um, I don't use it a whole lot, but it is very effective against COVID if you are trying to boost your immune system after being exposed um, or if you're dealing with it, it's good to take it every day. I don't use it a lot. It's something that I like having in my arsenal and I do take it again if i'm starting to feel under the weather it's really more of just a boost if you're dealing with a sinus or a respiratory type issue and it can be taken by adults and children i like this mary ruth's brand uh, which i will link down below and it can be taken by adults and children and pregnant women and there is dosage here on the back it's very easy to take and tasteless so the way i do this is what i like to do actually um is i just get some water and I will mix my vitamin C and this in one glass of water and just take it like a shot. Probably, probably about four ounces of water or so. I will mix it in and then just chug it. Okay, let's talk about elderberry syrup. Now this has become very popular over the years. I'm sure that most of you all have heard of elderberry syrup. It's easy to get kids to take because it tastes good. It's easy to make. Um, it's very high in antioxidants and vitamin A. This one in particular, I got from a local market. Well, actually, Stephen did. Um, this is what I have right now. So this is what I thought I would show you guys. Usually I will make my own or I'll get it from a friend that makes it. Um, and we hope to grow our own elderberries someday soon, maybe next year, I don't know, we'll see. Um, but if you're not growing elderberries, you can get dried elderberries and make your own. My favorite source for dried elderberries and basically any um, dried herbs is mountainroseherbs.com. So I will link them down below if you want to look at getting elderberries or any other dried herbs to make your own whatever with. So what you would use this for is basically the same things that you would use garlic for. And to be completely honest, I actually don't use this a whole lot. Um, I think just because I got so used to going to garlic first as a remedy for like cold and flu type things. Um, but this is great for that as well. It has anti-inflammatory, antiviral, and antibacterial properties and obviously it's a lot easier to get kids to take this. Um, it tastes really good. Let's talk about, this is not baby food guys. This is actually activated charcoal. And I just store it in this baby food jar because um, I source it from someone that gets it in bulk. So this I've noticed has slowly been becoming a lot more popular. I just see that a lot more commercial companies are starting to add or market charcoal and certain things like toothpaste and all of that, which is good. Um, it is good for your teeth. But honestly, if you're going to use activated charcoal, then to me, it's best to just have it in its pure powdered form so that you can mix it with whatever you need to. I usually mix it with water um, when the time comes and you can control the dosage a lot better. The way it works is it is detoxifying and it actually traps toxic substances in the gut. What I do is I will mix maybe an eighth to a quarter of a teaspoon in a eight ounce glass of water and give it to the kids when they have a stomach bug. It's also great to have on hand for emergency poisoning or overdose situations. 
activated charcoal is actually something that has been used in emergency rooms for those kind of situations. This is not something that you would take every day by any means, but it is helpful to have on hand in the right situations. I'm still chopping garlic. It's hard to chop and talk at the same time. This is harder than I thought it would be. Okay, next I wanna talk about tinctures. And tinctures are something that I guess most people would consider a more advanced thing to have in your natural holistic medicine cabinet. This year I have two tinctures that I have going right now and that's what is in these two jars. Um, one is my echinacea tincture, that's what is in this big half gallon jar. And I have a video on how I made it here on my channel. I will link that down below and I will put it up here in the corner as well if you wanna watch that. It goes a lot more into detail on how I made this. Um, now I made this with the fresh echinacea plant that I have growing in my front flower bed, but you can definitely do it in dried too. And that is something that you can also get at Mountain Rose Herbs if you are interested. So what a tincture is, it's basically just herbs covered in alcohol. And you want at least an 80 proof alcohol for most herbs. Um, you may want something higher depending on how like woody the herb is. You can use 100 proof Everclear, um, but what I use for this is just 80 proof vodka. So I packed the echinacea in there, and then I also added a cinnamon stick, I think, and I covered it with vodka, and you let it sit for like eight to 12 weeks. Echinacea tincture, what is it used for? Um, just briefly, uh, basically it is immune boosting, it fights viruses, and what I love about echinacea is it's actually very helpful for pain and fever as well. So if you or your family is dealing with, um, I don't know, aches or fever, this is something that I really like to use particularly. <laughs> what do <are> you mean? <laughs> Steven was bringing in some eggs. Okay, what was I saying? Immune boosting, antiviral, helps with pain and fever. Um, it can even be helpful with digestive issues. So it's basically all around great to take. We don't take this every day, but if we know that we need an immune boost, we've been exposed to something, um, I will take a little bit. And then if we do come down with something, we will take it until we're feeling better. I go into a lot more detail about echinacea tincture on my blog. If you want to read more about dosage, how I make it, all of that, I will link that down below in the description box. So this is another tincture that I just started a few weeks ago. Um, this is dandelion leaf tincture. And this is something I'm just trying out. It's new to me, uh, but I did want to mention it. Recent research has shown that dandelion leaf has the potential to block COVID spike proteins. And um, I know that that is something that a lot of people are concerned about right now. So I thought I would try this out and um, give it to my family. It also is helpful against illnesses that affect the liver, the gut, and the joints. So it's not gonna hurt to use for those things as well. And obviously dandelion leaf is something we have growing in abundance here. And I already had the vodka from where I made the echinacea tincture, so I just decided to throw this together. It also needs to steep for at least eight weeks. Now for these tinctures, once they are done steeping, I will strain them off and funnel them into amber bottles like this. This is the echinacea tincture that I made last year. This is what I store it in. It's just an amber dropper bottle like this. And I will link those down below as well. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them other places too. But these are what I love to keep on hand, not just for tincture, but also for garlic oil. Okay, so the very last thing that I wanted to mention, I wanted to throw this in because we use it so much for skin issues. This is herbal salve. It is made by my friends at Honeydew Naturals. I will link it below. You can also make your own using a mix of herbs that you get from Mountain Rose Herbs. Um, but to me, this is totally worth just buying. The price is great. It works amazingly well. It's convenient. So yeah, 
highly recommend this. This is for minor skin issues, whether it be burns or rashes or cuts or scrapes. Um, it's great to have in your first aid kit. We use it probably almost every day. I mean, I have four boys, so you can imagine how many cuts and scrapes and things like that we deal with. So I think that is it. I am almost done chopping up my garlic. So once I finish this up, I will show you guys how I cover it and we will be done. Okay, so here is my little jar of garlic. And I probably should have said, you don't have to chop it up even. Just peel it and throw it in a jar if you want. Maybe roughly chop it a few times. Um, but I like to go ahead and mince mine. I feel like it releases things faster. And also, once I strain this off, I can just go ahead and throw this into a recipe. So don't waste your garlic once you strain it. You can totally use this to cook something with once you strain it off. So you just top it with olive oil. That is what I use. Pour it on until it's just covered. And just put a lid on it. And I would let this sit for at least about a week. Um, you can do it longer if you want. But what I do is I just put this up in my pantry, let it sit in a cool dark place for a week and then I will strain it and I will either store it, I can store it in this jar or I can store it in an amber bottle. That way I can just drop however much I need once it's ready. Okay, I know that was just like super simple but I really felt like it was important to show you guys what I use in my holistic medicine cabinet and how you can get started with yours. I highly recommend starting with the garlic oil. It's so easy. It's easy to find the ingredients that you need. It's super effective. So yeah, go make garlic oil right now and you will be on your way to building your own holistic medicine cabinet. I love sharing natural health related things. Um, it has really made such a huge difference in our lives. I love taking responsibility for our own health. I love being prepared for whatever is thrown our way in terms of illness. I love knowing that what I'm giving my kids is naturally sourced, it's healthy, it has fewer side effects. So that is why it is so important to us to have things like this. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna wrap it up because like I said, the baby is waking up. And give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, share it with your friends if you think it would be helpful. And subscribe to my channel. I mostly share just our life here on our modern homestead and in our simple farmhouse. I will see you all in the next video.